thanks for the intro. Uh, I don't know if you needed to talk about my gravestone that much, <laughs> but uh, it's still nice. So, uh, yeah, like you just heard, my name is Sasha Grief, and uh, I'm really honored to be here today, especially to open uh, the event. And I'm going to talk about the state of JavaScript in 2017. And the state of JavaScript is actually a survey that I've been running for two years now. Has anybody here taken the survey? Maybe raise your hand. OK, so quite a few people. So first of all, thanks to everybody who took the survey, because I probably wouldn't be here today to talk about it otherwise. And so um, before I actually talk about the survey results, which, by the way, uh, this is the, the first time I'll, uh, I'll be sharing them publicly. So it's a Nordic JS exclusive. I want to talk a little bit about uh, my background and the, the project's background. So as you just heard uh, in my intro, I've kind of done a lot of things uh, in my career. And I had to write my resume recently. And so I wasn't quite sure what to put as a, a job description. So I put web developer, but you know, I've done UI design. Uh, I've launched my own projects, so I've done marketing, writing. And I guess I'm telling you all this because, well, I've never really considered myself like a, a real developer, like a professional developer. And I think that that also uh, relates to my own uh, personal history with JavaScript. And for a long time, JavaScript was something that was a bit obscure to me. Like, I wasn't super uh, comfortable with it. And I think it's probably not until uh, around 2008 when I started using jQuery that I really started getting into JavaScript. So I used jQuery for a while. Uh, I used it to build small apps, like this is a, a pixel drawing app entirely built with jQuery. And I really liked jQuery, but I kind of felt limited after a while because uh, I was only coding client-side apps, didn't have any like backend skills, couldn't you know persist data in a database. And so I started looking around for a way to do that. And that's when I found uh, Meteor around 2012. Now, Meteor is a JavaScript framework, and the thing that makes it really special is that it's a full-stack framework, meaning that you can write your JavaScript code on the server and on the client, and even share code between those two environments. So I really got into Meteor, uh, in fact, so much that I ended up, ended up writing a book, Discover Meteor. But then a couple years uh, after that, um, well, I had been, you know, neck deep in the Meteor ecosystem, and I realized that there was a lot going on in the JavaScript ecosystem as a whole. And I didn't really know that much about it, so uh, I kind of looked around, and I got pretty confused. Like, I had been using React a little bit, little bit but then there was Redux, uh, GraphQL, all these new frameworks, all these new libraries. And I think I wasn't the only one feeling this way because uh, this is uh, around the same time as this uh, blog post came out, How It Feels to Learn JavaScript in 2016, which talks about this uh, JavaScript fatigue uh, phenomenon. And you, know, you can see it was popular. It got over uh, 16,000 recommends on Medium. And those, by the way, are uh, real recommends, not of the clapping bullshit we have now on Medium. So, yeah, this is basically how I got the idea of uh, doing this survey, both as a way of uh, answering my own doubts and questions, and also because I figured, well, if I'm feeling this way, probably a lot of other people could benefit from uh, a little uh, clarity. And um, the survey was quite successful. It got picked up in uh, a bunch of online publications. And so it only made sense to do it again this year. Yeah. So there is uh, one big change uh, with this year's survey. It's that I'm not doing it uh, by myself anymore. Uh, I'm joined, first of all, by uh, Michael Rambo, who is the maintainer of 
bestofjs.org. And if you don't know bestofjs, it's a really, really awesome resource uh, where Michael basically compiles all the most popular JavaScript libraries and then uh, ranks them by popularity based on their GitHub stars. They're also sorted by uh, tag. So if you're looking for like a good uh, charting library, for example, you can go on there and get the latest rankings. It's super useful. And then uh, actually this week, uh, we had a third member join us, uh, Rafael Benit. He's the author of the Nevo uh, library for data visualization for React, which is a really, really cool uh, library with tons of pre-made like charts and graphs you can play with. Uh, what's funny, it's kind of a coincidence, but both uh, Raphael and Michael, they're both French like me, and they're both JavaScript developers like me, and they also both live in Osaka, Japan like me. So um, in case you're wondering, for some reason, Osaka like, really attracts French JavaScript developers. And this is where Osaka is. I know on the map it looks really close to North Korea, uh, but I'm sure it's perfectly safe. Uh, at least I hope so. So uh, if you have a chance to come and say hello, you know, you should definitely uh, hit me up. Now, before I actually, um, you know, show you the, the results, the survey results, I just want to share a few stats about the uh, survey itself. So first up, 37,000 visitors. Uh, that's a pretty huge increase uh, over last year's survey. Same thing with uh, survey responses. So we had over 23,000 this year compared to around 9,000 last year. So as you can see, if we keep increasing at the same rate, like year over year, I think uh, a couple years from now, we'll be reaching like a really good chunk of the JavaScript ecosystem, which is really cool. We had 101 questions. Uh, which is a lot, a little bit more than last year. I, I know it seems like a lot, it is a lot, but I think it only reflects like the, how rich the JavaScript ecosystem has become. Uh, we really tried to like keep it down, but it, wasn't just, it just wasn't possible to come in at anything under 100 questions. There's just too much stuff to cover. Um, so because there were 100 questions, it took people uh, 14 minutes on average, to fill out the survey compared to with 12 minutes. So with all that data, you can calculate the lost productivity that we cost to the JavaScript ecosystem, which is about 230 days of work. <laughs> so hopefully, the, the survey results uh, make up for that. So the charts, um, this is the part you've all been waiting for. And this is how they're going to be uh, laid out. So the way the survey worked is for every uh, library, every technology, you had five possible answers. The first one uh, is about awareness. And it's if you've never heard of a given library. So in this case, you can see that 10% uh, of respondents have never heard of myawesomelibrary.js. And you can deduce, of course, that 90% of people have heard about it. Now, of these people, um, the second block uh, of options is about interest. So it's whether you've heard of the library but are not interested in learning it or maybe feeling neutral. Or on the other hand, you've heard about it and would like to learn it. And then finally, uh, the last block here in purple is about satisfaction. So it's whether you have used the library but would not want to use it again, or finally, if you've used it and would like to use it again. So with these five uh, metrics, I think you get a pretty good picture of uh, the sentiment around any given library in 2017. So let's start with JavaScript flavors. And what I mean by that is, um, any var variant of JavaScript or any language that compiles down to JavaScript. Uh, the most common is probably ES6, uh, which you know, included uh, ES7, includes ES2017, whatever it's called today. 
basically. And even uh, last year, back in 2016, you can see it already had a really, really good uh, would use it again score at 74%. And now this year, uh, it's even uh, larger than that, 87%. So overall, it seems like ESS is really becoming like a, a standard for JavaScript developers. Now, a disclaimer, uh, these results obviously are only representative of people who actually took the survey. So I can't say if uh, this is representative of the JavaScript community as a whole, but I do think it kind of shows uh, at least the trend in which things are going. TypeScript, another uh, very popular uh, flavor of JavaScript. So last year, you can see it, it, the trend wasn't quite clear, like lots of interest, but also lots of people who weren't that interested, and then kind of uh, average usage numbers. Uh, this year, uh, a pretty positive trend for TypeScript. And I think this matches my own uh, anecdotal experience. I've been seeing a, more and more open source projects using TypeScript. And I think these numbers show that, yeah, TypeScript is kind of becoming uh, the next big thing, or at least one of them. Front end frameworks. Now, that's probably one of the most uh, hotly contested uh, er areas of the JavaScript landscape today. There's like a new front end library coming out every month or maybe every, even every week sometimes, it seems. That being said, there are a few like uh, main players, starting with, of course, React. So last year, React already had a really good chunk of the front-end library uh, market. This year, uh, it's pretty stable, not a ton of change. But I think what's important to, to notice on this chart is the satisfaction ratio. So you can see that there's a, you know, a really strong proportion of people who are happy with React, over 90% of React users. And that's important because uh, React, of course, has the backing of Facebook. Uh, it has a lot of uh, buzz behind it. And sure, those are all important factors in its success. But I think this chart shows that uh, it's not all uh, buzz. It's not just the fad. People who use React are actually happy to keep using it. And to me, that's probably the, the single most important metric when it comes to picking uh, a technology. So uh, good for React. Another very interesting chart is uh, Vue, Vue.js. Now, last year, uh, you can see that around a, a fourth of people, 23%, hadn't even heard about Vue. And usage was uh, pretty low at 11% uh, total. But just like React, you can see even though usage was low, people who were using Vue were pretty happy with it, over 90%. And this year, uh, yeah, the trend is really, really positive. Uh, a lot more people have heard about Vue. They usually want to learn it. They have a really positive uh, impression of it. Usage has doubled, but at the same time, the satisfaction ratio has remained constant. So this is pretty much the, the best uh, you can hope for um, in, as a trend. And it wouldn't surprise me if next year, like even more people go from like the would like to learn column to the would use again column. Now, Vue had a really positive trend. Uh, AngularJS, not so much. <laughs> uh, last year, um, it wasn't looking great. This year, yeah. <laughs> now, this makes sense because this is the old Angular, so uh, AngularJS. And Google has since come out with Angular um, IO or Angular 2 or 4.5. Um, it has lots of names. So last year, not a ton of interest. Uh, usage was low. This year, it's not that much better. And, you know, I'm not an Angular guy, but from what I've seen, I think uh, Angular is suffering from uh, the success of Vue. I've heard a lot of people who 
are migrating from Angular to Vue because Vue is seen kind of uh, doing a lot of the same things as Angular, but in a simpler way. And uh, yeah, I think that shows in, in those charts. So it, it'll be interesting to see if next year Angular kind of goes a little bit up or if it keeps uh, on its uh, downward trajectory like that. So let's take a little break because uh, I know that uh, looking at uh, all these numbers first thing in the morning can be a bit tough. So I actually prepared a little uh, game we can play together. And it's, uh, what, is it working? Okay. It's a quiz, basically, a quiz about JavaScript libraries. So here's how it's going to work. On every slide, you'll have a description of a library and then uh, two options, and you have to pick the right name for the library. So first off, a fast and lightweight UI component library from the Ember.js team. Now raise your hand when I say each option if you think that's the right answer. So who here thinks it's Glimmer? Raise your hand. OK, quite a few people. What about Simmer? OK, and the answer is, drum roll, Glimmer. Yeah, this one wasn't too hard, because um, you know, an Ember is something that glimmers, and also it's kind of a well-known uh, library in the Ember uh, world. But don't worry, it, it will get harder. <laughs> A minimalistic Clojure script interface to React.js. Who here thinks it's detergent? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Who here thinks it's reagent? Yeah, this one was easy. Uh, React, reagent, that makes sense. Simplifies your backbone application code with robust views and architecture solutions. Anybody thinks it's Puppet? A few people. What about Marionette? Yeah, you, you got it. It's Marionette. Uh, I thought this would be harder because it seems like not that many people use Backbone anymore, uh, but apparently maybe they do. Single page apps done right. Uh, who here thinks it might be Durandal? What about Excalibur? So those are both really cool uh, sword names. Uh, but just like uh, in Highlander, there can be only one. And that one is Durandal. Yeah, I, I didn't know about Durandal either before making that quiz, so don't feel bad. <laughs> a web component library focusing on a functional rendering pipeline and a small footprint. Is it SkateJS or is it RollerJS? And yeah, it's getting trickier. This one is actually SkateJS. So this one is a real head scratcher. Uh, a state controller with its own debugger. Is it Cerebral or is it Intellect? I feel like there's people not raising their hands. <laughs> That's cheating. You have to pick one. It's cerebral. OK, let's step things up a notch. Now you'll have three options to pick from. So a one kilobyte JavaScript library for building front-end applications. Is it HyperApp? Or is it SuperApp? <laughs> or is it Awesome App? I think all three would make really cool kick-ass names for a JavaScript library, but the answer is HyperApp. Now, a four kilobyte framework for creating sturdy front-end applications. Is it true? Or is it cha-cha-cha? <laughs> or is it chomp? I, I promise one of them is a real name of a real JavaScript library, and it is Chew. Yeah, the logo is kind of a cute little train. It's uh, pretty cool. A friendly and fast UI library from eBay that makes building web apps fun. So who here thinks it might be Marky? How about Murky? 
What about Marco? Okay, and the answer is Marco. Yeah. And finally, last one, a minimal blazing fast UI library. Blazing fast. Is it sun? Or is it moon? Or maybe is it star? So this one was actually a trick question because it's moon. <laughs> the only thing that's not blazing. <laughs> so game over. Thanks for playing along. So raise your hand if you got all of them right. OK, a few people. So if anybody's looking to hire a front-end developer, these are the folks you need to talk to afterwards. So let's get back to our numbers. Uh, next up is the data layer section. Now, what I mean by data layer, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, everything that concerns uh, querying for data, uh, managing data, storing data, starting with, of course, Redux. Now, last year, this, one, this was one of the results that surprised me the most, because um, my impression of Redux from just you know, reading about it, hearing people complain about it, was that it was uh, very complex to use. You had too much uh, boilerplate. It was over-engineered. And so I expected that people wouldn't uh, enjoy using it. It turns out that it's not really true. Like It has a really good satisfaction ratio. And this year, uh, it's the same, uh, even better, in fact. So you know, I think Redux might be one of these things where the, the learning curve is a bit tough. But then once you understand it, uh, it's pretty good, and you're pretty happy with it. Another very interesting chart is uh, GraphQL. So as you can see, last year, over a third of respondents had never even heard of GraphQL. This year, uh, a lot more people have, and especially a lot more people want to learn it. And I think what this chart shows is that uh, 2018 is going to be the, the year of GraphQL. Like All these people are going to look into it and start using it more and more. And this also shows that I probably shouldn't be here. I should be at home working on a GraphQL book. <laughs> Mobile frameworks. So this category is pretty much dominated by uh, React Native. A uh, lot of interest uh, both years. Not that many people actually using React Native. I suspect this is probably just because this was a survey of uh, JavaScript developers who tend to be more like web developers than mobile developers. And of course, most of the time, you know, not every app will need a, a mobile counterpart. So uh, that's probably why usage is only around 20%. Still, a very positive satisfaction. Lots of people who want to learn it. So overall, a very good trend for React Native. And Finally, the last category, build tools um, with Webpack. So last year, Webpack was already pretty dominant at 50% uh, would use it again score. This year, it's even more dominant, going all the way up to 70%. I think this is uh, due in large part to the rise of tools that uh, make use of Webpack and kind of give you all its benefits without having to deal with the setup, the configuration, and so on. So I'm thinking about things like Next.js, uh, Create React App, uh, Gatsby.js for static sites. Uh, these all make it like, really easy to get the benefits from Webpack. So uh, I think that's probably why Webpack is so dominant. And it does look like it's you know, the, the default, the standard build tool in 2017. Now, before I leave you, uh, we actually had a free comment field in uh, the survey. And we had over uh, 3,000 comments. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them, but I did prepare a selection of my favorites. Starting with this one, it's a pleasure to, to take this survey. You actually learn something as well. So this is, this is awesome, of course. Uh, it's really cool to read this. Also, I think. It's the first time someone has ever said this. It's a pleasure to, pleasure to take this survey. Like, I don't think this has been spoken before. 
in the history of humanity and surveys. JavaScript used to be the bane of my existence. It is not anymore. Good job, JavaScript. Uh, another really cool comment, and I think it kind of, you know, touches on something that's really uh, meaningful, which is that even like five years back, JavaScript wasn't considered like a, a serious programming language. Uh, people love to complain about its inconsistencies, it, it weird, uh, its quirks, um, its weird behaviors. And then we kind of went through a period of uh, maturation and an explosion of new frameworks, libraries, uh, syntaxes. And this in turn led to this uh, JavaScript fatigue meme that was all over Hacker News and Reddit uh, last year. But now I think we're finally like coming out on the other side of, of this explosion and things are narrowing down and getting simplified and kind of working better. And I think that's reflected in this comment, like JavaScript is not the bane of our collective existences anymore and that's a really good thing. <laughs> Drop table. I'm really glad this didn't work, otherwise I would have lost all uh, 23,000 responses and I would have had to start over. Yeah. JavaScript and its entire ecosystem should die in an out of control, raging fire. <laughs> I guess everybody's entitled to their opinion, right? But keep in mind this is coming from somebody who just spent 40 minutes on a survey about JavaScript. So you know that they still care deep down. <laughs> this survey makes me feel like a fossil. So many things I never, never even heard of. Yeah, this is uh, another common sentiment, which is perfectly uh, understandable. Uh, there is a lot of things in the survey. There are a lot of things in the ecosystem as a whole. That being said, I, I think the, the survey results especially can help you make sense of, of all this. And uh, the next comment reflects that. So reading last year's survey showed me what to focus on to stay sane. I probably wouldn't still be doing JavaScript if it wasn't for this survey. Uh, this is also really awesome. This is exactly why we set out to do this survey, to help uh, people stay sane, basically. So reading that was a, yeah, that was a really nice thing. And finally, roses are red, yellow are ducks. It's 2017, and JS still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so again, you know, uh, everybody has opinions. At least this commenter was nice enough to put it in poetry. So that's nice. I want to leave you with uh, one final number. And that number is 170, which is the number of times the word love was mentioned in those comments. As in, uh, I love JavaScript or I loved this survey. Uh, and I think, you know, as developers, we often get a bad reputation as like grumpy people who love to complain, who love to nitpick. Uh, but really, the, these survey results, I think they, they show me that um, it's not really the case, like it's kind of the, the, it might be the appearance we project, but really uh, the community as a whole is pretty po positive and I think this all makes me really optimistic for the, the future of JavaScript. You know, I really think it, its best days are ahead of it, pretty much. And uh, I'm pretty sure during the next day uh, of talks, uh, it's only going to confirm this trend. So. If you want to learn more about the survey, you can go to stateofjs.com. You can also sign up to know when the, the full results uh, come out. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, please come say hello afterwards if you have any questions about the survey or anything else. And one more thing. So it's, it's not the new iPhone, no. <laughs> but actually, I'm doing a, a workshop later today. Uh, about the project I've been working on with React and GraphQL. So if you're curious about it, you can go to vulcanjs.nordicjs.com to sign up. And so maybe I'll see some of you there. Thanks, everybody.